Today we're going to talk about how to design nose cones using the Rocket Workbench. Hopefully you've already got it installed. If not, you should follow the link shown on your screen and take care of that first. Okay, so with it installed, we're going to create a new document. Now, in my case, I have it set to default to the Rocket Workbench um, as soon as I open a document. You can have it default to whatever you like, or you can manually switch it to the Rocket Workbench here. If you want to know how to set your default, go to Edit, Preferences, under Start, you can give it a workbench to um, start with when you first create a document. So set it to the one you most commonly use right now since I'm working on the Rocket Workbench. Uh, I have mine set to that. Okay, so that saves the step. So what we're going to talk about today are nose cones. And to create a nose cone, you would select the nose cone design either from the toolbar or from the Rocket menu. Okay. And as you create one, it brings up the task and you can edit the parameters of your nose cone here. Now, it's not a lot of parameters, uh, but there's a lot of variations. So we're going to go through and discuss them one at a time. Okay, by default, you get a nose cone without a shoulder and it has a length, which is the length of the cone and the radius, which is the radius of the base. Now, you can add a shoulder to this, okay? So the length here does not include the shoulder. The shoulder has a separate length. And it also has a radius. It has to be less than the base of the nose cone. Okay, so let's look at some of the other parameters. The first is the nose cone type. And we have quite a few in here. And uh, there's a lot of theory behind the shapes of the nose cones and so on. So I'm including in the links below the link to the Wikipedia page on nose cone design. Now it is a very good introduction and it has the references you need to um, examine in more detail. But there's certainly a lot more math than you really want to deal with when you're dealing with a CAD program, which is one of the purposes of this workbench. I've done the math so you don't have to. Okay. So as we look at the various nose cone shapes, I'm going to refer back to this page. Okay, so the default is the OG, but uh, we'll take them in, in order. We'll start with the simple cone. Now, there's not a lot of surprises with the cone. It has a length and a base, and it's cone-shaped. Okay, so the next one is the ellipse. If we go to our, uh, sorry, if we go to the Wikipedia page, you can scroll down and we will get to the ellipse. So this is the shape that you're familiar with from high school math. It has a semi-major radius and a length. Um, and uh, yeah, you just take that and revolve it. So this is the formula for it. And again, I've done the math so you don't have to. Okay. The OGV, so this is the default. Um, it is one of the more commonly used shapes in rocketry. Uh, so let's dig into that a little bit. Um, now, there are a couple of styles of OGV. The one that is implemented here is the tangent OGV. We don't have the secant OGV implemented at this point, but uh, uh, yeah, that may come at a future time. So if we look at the OGV, it's actually uh, just a portion of a circle. So we have a radius and a length, and the actual radius of the circle that it um, is composed of is rho, and rho is determined by the radius and length parameters. Okay, so you don't have to worry too much about that. It's not something you really configure. All you have to worry about is setting the radius and the length. Parabola. So this is another common shape in uh, rocketry. Um, so if we look at the types, there's actually two, a parabola and a parabolic series. A parabola is not the same as the parabolic series. If you want the shape that you're familiar with from high school math, it is in fact the parabola. Okay, and we'll talk about the difference there in a moment. Okay, so let's look at the series. 
So generally we have a number of series, the parabolic series, the power series, the hack series. Von Karman is a special case of the hack series. And the parabola, surprisingly, is not a special case of the parabolic series, but of the power series. Okay. Now when you select a series, so if we look at a parabolic series, there's a uh, coefficient associated with each series, and that will, um, to a large degree, determine the shape of your um, of your nose. So let's look at the parabolic series. Okay. Now, I mentioned earlier the parabola is not the parabolic series. The parabolic series is characterized by having a sharp tip on the nose. Okay. Now, you can affect the, uh, the slope of that outer edge by using that radius. Okay, so what we have here is um, a half. And if we look at the uh, nose cone, it looks, it's almost a cone. Okay, now we can increase that. And you can see it's getting a little fatter at the base and it's taking longer to uh, uh, coalesce into that tip. Okay, and if we set it to one, it looks almost like an ogive. Uh, it may be the same. I haven't actually looked at the math. Uh, but the formula for generating it is different. So the next one is the power series. And when you set it to 1, it actually is a cone. So if we look at uh, the description of it, the power series has a, um, uh, a number of common coefficients. The cone is 1. 0 is a cylinder. Now, for reasons that uh, we'll see a little bit later, uh, we can actually set it to zero. Zero will give you an error, and that error shows in the report view below. And that's because um, uh, just for other variants on the power series, uh, you can't have a full cylinder. So let's set it to something close to one. And you can see that's effectively a cylinder. So we can get close to zero, but we can't have it at zero. Okay, so when we set it to 0.5, this is the parabola. So this is the parabolic shape that we're used to from high school math. Okay, and as we increase that, it becomes more and more like a cone. Okay, so the von Karman is a special case of the hack series. It is um, the hack series with a coefficient of zero. So let's just look at the hack series. Um, and it's actually a pretty interesting uh, shape from um, an aerodynamic point of view. Um, so it is uh, based on mathematical theory. So it, it's, it's designed to optimize the aerodynamics. Uh, particularly in the transonic and sonic regions. Okay, so there are two major variants, the LD hack or the von Karman and the LV hack. Okay, and the difference between them and why they're special, the LD is optimized for minimum drag for a given diameter and the LV is optimized for minimum drag with a given volume. Okay. And uh, you can see as we increase the coefficient here, it starts getting fatter and fatter. Now, the coefficients for the other series are limited to a maximum of one. That's not the case for the hack series. And in fact, you can get some pretty interesting shapes as you go above one. So for example, let's go to two. Okay, you can see it's more of a bulbous shape. Now, if we look at the von Karman, so again, that's the hack with a coefficient of zero. And uh, that is the shape that you're commonly going to see in transonic and supersonic rockets. Okay, so the next property we have is style. And there are uh, three variants here, solid, hollow, and capped. So solo, solid would correspond to something like a uh, full balsa wood nose cone. Uh, obviously, it's uh, solid. So one of the nice things about FreeCAD is we can actually look at the interior here and we can see it is in fact solid through the whole thing. Now if we set it to hollow, 
Okay, as the name implies, it is hollow and there is no cap on the end of the nose cone. Okay, now it's like a hollow nose cone within a solid nose cone. The third variation, capped, it's still hollow, but it's just got a cap on the end. Now, when you have uh, something that is either capped or um, hollow, you need to specify a thickness, and that's going to be the thickness of the wall. And one of the things you can do is have a different thickness for the nose cone and for the base itself. So, for example, if I want a stronger base, I'll set that to 4. Okay, then I'll go and look at the internals, and you can see it's a much thicker base. So if you're printing that with uh, on a 3D printer, for example, you'll have a lot more plastic in the base. So that's nose cones, nice and simple. Now, when you're uh, looking to edit it, you have a couple of options. You can select from the uh, model tree and you have all of the parameters shown uh, in the property uh, table. Or you can double click on it and it'll bring you back up into the task dialog where you can edit the parameters here. Uh, and then you can either select OK or cancel. Okay. So that's nose cones, nice and simple.